Good evening. So this evening's uh, uh, Dharma talk is uh, is going to be based on, but not limited to, questions from um, from the Shuso, which is uh, right now uh, Ondo is functioning as the Shuso in the monastery. This changes about every six months or so. Last week we had the Sukansu, which was Chiazan. And next week we will have, uh, I'm not sure, sure who the Eno is going to be, but uh, whoever that Eno is, that Eno is going to be in the, is this a hot seat? It feels <laughs> like it right now. <laughs> kind of warm. Uh, so we'll, we'll do some uh, um, exchange here a little bit, maybe quite a lot, maybe a little bit, hard to say. Mm. But uh, start out with uh, on those questions uh, for me. And uh, and then I'll respond, and then at some point, um, open it up to questions for me or for her. Uh, uh, all those will be sitting up here relative to uh, our practice. So, where would you like to start? What do you have? On the um, in as a therapist, um, the vow to be with all things is. Um, something that attracts me to this path. Um, I'm keenly aware of my self-centeredness the more I am here and mm -hmm. um, you are my teacher. Yes. How do you mirror my self-centeredness to me? How do I see my self-centeredness in our relationship, Balin? So you might be able to make a commentary on it yourself, but from my point of view or perspective, uh, I don't. I don't deliberately mirror anything. I'm not functioning that way. Uh, my way of saying is, I meet you where you're at. Anybody who comes this way, I meet them where they're at. And if I just meet someone in the in the Seven Eleven, we have Seven Elevens anymore. In the store, which is un unlikely these days, but if I do meet some someone, uh, then I meet them where they're at. They're, and they're, they're not a student of mine, so I, I meet them wherever they're at. So the same thing is happening. The degree to which you function as uh, as a student, as my student, to that degree, I can meet you where you're at in your, in your confusion, in your dismay, in your uh, emotional states. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to Come in, come in and correct them or shake my finger at you. Uh, the way that I meet you may be different every single time. You may not even see it as a mirror quality. You may feel it more as possibly a criticism or uh, as affection or as uh, a love. So many different ways that that can show up and it will be different with each person because I don't see, uh, I don't see, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. How, I don't differentiate between people because when I see you, there isn't anybody but you. When I, I just finished a 45 minute long interview with uh, Nishikai, who is the, the Eno right now, and there isn't anybody but him. It's not some kind of fancy feeling where I'm, I'm somehow absorbed with the Greek. It's just, it's just definite and it's very obvious and it's very simple. And it's not that it doesn't show up as some kind of other situation where, oh, I must be on the spiritual path because I'm such a, a great spiritual teacher. So there's no the identity is is very much uh, lowered in terms of the teaching person because the the heightened awareness of who's in front of me becomes very very strong. So uh, the way I say it to everybody, including people really close to me, like Unio, my wife, I say. Whatever, however this looks to you, be a student, especially if you're a monk. But if you're, even if you're not, if you think of yourself as a, as a student of this teacher and you're not, or you don't have to be ordained, but receive everything as a teaching, not that it's somehow uh, the teacher can do no wrong. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying whatever shows up is, uh, see it as a, as a teaching. And that may not be clear to you right away. You might look at it and think it doesn't look like a teaching at all, but continue to return to that part of it. 
more. Wonder Bowling, how does love and affection, um, how is that a teaching, Bowling? <clears throat> well, if you are uh, pretty much in hate with yourself, then uh, that might be uh, turn that around so much, somewhat. Uh, or if you're uh, super, uh, um, have some kind of artificial love, which I would call pride, being in love with who you think you are, uh, some kind of protective shield around the ego that just generates some kind of a me, me, me and my stuff, my feeling, my ideas and so on. Uh, that could be met depending on the situation. That isn't all, there's no standard that the teaching person is living up to. Like if you're full of pride, the teacher is necessarily going to come and shake his finger at you. You should be so full of yourself. Uh, that being said, they might, there might be a lot of affection in that way for that particular person. Uh, there also could be, again, it's, uh, it's very situational. So there's no standard that the teacher uh, is, as far as a true teacher, someone who's teaching out of what they see, the, the subtlety, the nuance is very, very different each time. And at the same time that the teacher is receiving what's coming from you, uh, as your appearance, you're sitting there, your question, the teacher is also looking at, at the same time, what is arising in terms of any, any reactivity from them about you. More? So um, I wanted to uh, ask a question about, um, and I can't pull, pull it quite together, the um, false sense of self, where you're saying that that is um, pride, and you meet that with affection? You might. Keep coming. How do, how is that? Um, Say it. How can I? How can I see that? How can I work with that? How can I? Okay, so uh, that may that pride can show up uh, not just as being puffy and and full of radiance, uh, or me me me. It can also uh, show up as because there's a lot of fear happening there. So the teaching person may be may see that that the cover up may look like pride, may be always uh, show up as something that might be called that. But what is underneath that can be intense fear. So uh, affection or love may show up. Window bowing, does that help us uh, then see this, the, kind of that version of self-centeredness? You, you may not see it the way the teaching person sees it. You may have to eventually see that there is no one, that there's no solid being there called me or myself or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. The function that's happening, the emotions that come and go are quite often used as fuel to perpetuate some kind of self-centeredness or ego. And it's in the ego mind, the, the way quite often the world is working with this is to try to get rid of the negativity, try to stop feeling that way. Whereas in, on this, the way I understand this, uh, it is about not particularly doing anything with what, uh, what arises in the mind stream, including believing it or disbelieving it or shutting it down because it's looking for a self to, to, uh, in order to fuel the self so it can perpetuate that dependent origination that we call, uh, in this case, the three poisons, passion, aggression, ignorance, that, f that those two situations feed off from each other. De uh, the ego is also dependent on the origin. But we, that is a, an entry that we have into it called subjectivity, where we can actually go into the subjectivity and see that it is unreal, that there's no one actually there. So when um, you're kind of using the four karmas, I mean, I, I know you're not choosing it, but it seems like then you're saying when you love, when love and affection, in the case of false pride, or I can't remember exactly how you put it. Could be pacifying. Is that what you're? Yes. Yeah, you might pacify and try to soften the situation, be affectionate and pacified. If you see someone is dealing with a lot of self um, dislike, which is another way of saying pride, because it's pride and shame are two sides of the same dynamic. And I uh, see that as self centeredness. Is that 
the same thing yeah, as yeah. pride? Belie yes, believing, believing, just without even looking into it, believing that there's someone who can be harmed, believing there's someone who can get ahead, someone who's falling behind, someone who can live, someone who can die. It gets very, very extreme in, start, in terms of the polarities. So you're in the student-teacher relationship, we have a chance to see the affliction, but you're saying we may not actually see the affliction, we will um, possibly see no self first? You may, because the affliction is just more dependent origination. Uh, what I'm saying is no prior, is no, well, you need to see this before you can see that. Quite often in the teachings, you'll hear teachers say, well, you need to understand the concepts before you can go on beyond the concepts into uh, no self, no other. Like saying you have to understand uh, every single, single thing that Vasubandhu says in the 30 verses intellectually before you can transcend the, the du duality that is being pointed at there through subjectivity, objectivity. But you need to do some of it, perhaps, but you, it, the, the insight uh, uh, just um, arises. And this is why you're, uh, you have the name Ondo, which means path of grace. And I saw that in, in you when I met you, because you're already awake. Everyone is already awake, by the way. You're just covering it up with your bullshit, your fear. Your beliefs, your opinions, your ideas, your all the contraptions that, that come out of the culture we live in that are propelled by our family situation and our belief in this and our disbelief in that. <clears throat> so you're all all you have to do is stop covering that up. There was something else I wanted to ask there, but I lost it. <clears throat> so anything? So, so so let's go back into you're a therapist, you meet people. Um, every day, almost every day, or quite often, meet people in your job as a, a, as a therapist and, and you meet them. And it's, how is your sitting practice of meditation over the, what, six years, seven years? Well, you've been practicing awareness practice for 20 years, probably, or more. So how, how are you bringing uh, what you understand through your awareness practice to your, your uh, counseling or to your therapy? How is that showing up? Yeah. Um, very situationally. So, yeah. so um, uh, the person I met today um, <clears throat> suffers from chronic pain. And so, um, meeting her where she's at, um, being present to her so that she can maybe, um, there's a term you use in a co-regulate is a term that we use in therapy <coughs> where she can um, maybe experience a little bit more of a um, quieting of her own mind and body by being in my presence over Zoom. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can't think of specifics, but there's there, it's, there's not probably anything that I say or do that is not grounded in the in the practice. And I, I frequently hear your words coming out of my mouth. Um, I never promote meditation unless someone specifically asks, uh, and then I talk about uh, it being on a continuum, uh, so that I. I'm giving them options of what they could do if they wanted to just um, do some calming mm -hmm. at one end or give them, I do give them if they are interested in the experience of Shikantaza. So it's situational. Mm -hmm. Very situational. Sounds good. So any further questions for me showing up right now? 
Well, to the idea of, um, you know, my personal struggles with shame and pride. Yes. Um, uh, that very much informs my practice in that um, I hear you, you know, say meet people where they're at. Well, I can meet people where they're at because so often that's, um, it can be a factor in whatever the, um, my client is dealing with. What's the question? Um, can my pride and shame harm another? No. Not at all. Can't happen. So I come back to what everyone hears me talk about all the time. It's the intention. The intention. If your intention is to be of service or help others, and you have an awareness practice besides, then it's very unlikely that you're going to make things worse for anyone. That doesn't mean you'll necessarily have some kind of a success story going on. People are severely confused, as we know. Intention. And yes, so but. my own confusion, um, can I put that on somebody else? You can project it onto them. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's impossible not to. Yeah. But I guess I'm more, the question is, um, uh, I see this path, especially right now, but it's, it's being very difficult. Um, um, so um, I'm a, aware of the fact that I can, in um, it with clients actually suggest that or suggest what that um, this life is suffering this path is difficult uh, or you know I, I wouldn't use the word path but life is difficult it can be painful and and meet them in that pain but I think I'm meeting them in that pain am I Potentially not. Am I projecting my pain on them? Could, right. be, could be, but the important thing, as you've heard me say many times, is that it's important to be aware of something, not to necessarily go in and stop it or manipulate it or shut it down. You might eventually do something with something that's showing up as being off center, off balance, or uh, too intrusive or something, but it should be really observed first before we go in and try to. Uh, to get some kind of a little success story about how good we are at something or to improve in that way. So it's necessary to just observe that, watch that. I'm just remembering um, the direction I wanted to go with the um, questions earlier. Go ahead. Um, what in the teacher student relationship can um, we do in order to see not separate to see the um, not solid, not solid self. So one of the things you can do is to see the way you project onto the teacher. You'll actually put your own fears and doubts on the teacher. Pretty hard not to do that, at least some. Have you noticed? Yes. Okay. So what's to be done about that? First thought. Uh, be aware. Yeah, be aware. Of it. That's it. You don't have to fix anything. And another way of saying that it's like it's as if it's a willingness to have this go on. You don't. You're not looking around the corner and say, "Well, maybe this will go away." I just won't meddle with it, but maybe it'll go away. It comes to a situation where you don't care what happens next. This doesn't mean you take your eyes off from anything, or that you don't have a pri uh, a preference over something being uh, less suffering. Of course, you do. But you don't go in based on your uh, skill with a hammer and tong and go in and start to manipulate things or control it. What about it? it seems though that we um, have to do something, or that there's some effort involved. For example, um, when negative feelings arise, uh, to not buy into the story that's happening with the negative feelings. Is that too much? So what do you mean by not buy into it? I mean, like, um, today, I 
had anger coming up. Um, and I just observed it and um, um, kind of invited myself to be in the, um, you know, through my senses in the present moment, for lack of a better term. Feel the anger. Yes. Rather than do something with it. That's, that's appropriate. Did you at all go into how you, uh, or lecture yourself, how you shouldn't be angry? No. Good. That's, that's a, uh, meeting something as it arises rather than adding, rather than outflows that backflow into your mind stream. There's the outflow that comes out from how you feel to what you say into the world, but there also there's the outflow that tumbles around inside your mind uh, called subconscious gossip about well, he shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done that. I need to stop saying that. I shouldn't say, they shouldn't, he shouldn't, they shouldn't, all of that. And so if you're not doing that, if you're just feeling uh, the, the uh, negativity, then that's, and if you notice that you do that, it really doesn't have much longevity to it. It gets its duration through being fiddled with. As Trangu Rinpoche, I think it was Trangu said, if you do nothing, nothing to thoughts, they will do nothing to you. It's a pretty good slogan, go ahead. So, um, it, like when you say it doesn't stick around very long, it was at least half an hour. It's, That's not very long. I can see the invitation to, mm -hmm. for all the story, feel the feeling, and um, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Were you mad at me? Yes. Now, I'm, apparently I'm doing my job, aren't I? <laughs> Or maybe I'm not. Maybe you're just getting mad at me because I'm convenient. I would say you're doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> you're my teacher. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why it's important to have a teacher. Not just any old teacher. More? So I invite some questions for, for uh, Ondo or myself have them for either of us. Well, just for me. You go ahead. Junshu Valley, um, what did you mean by you're doing your job because she got angry at you? You said you. I'm not deliberately doing anything. So might be good to ask her about it or not. Can I ask her about it? I don't know. She probably won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, what, what did that mean when he said he was doing his job? Meeting me where I'm at. And I see that he he doesn't choose to pacify, enrich, magnetize, destroy. Um, but I certainly feel all four of those things. Uh, so, and those four karmas show up in different ways, and they show up if you understand what those are, and if you're not. Uh, if you're not fueling some kind of a uh, personhood, uh, as far as the teaching person, then they show up spontaneously because the only thing there is is the is a student. The only thing there is is if you become a Dharma teacher, there won't be anyone there other than your students if you happen to have them. And if you don't, then you'll mind your own business and and uh, work in the garden or do something else. More. Is the job of the teacher to trigger our anger? The job of the teacher is to meet you in your confusion, which may be anger. And if that teacher is a true teacher, they'll not be concerned about pissing you off. They're not worried about losing your friendship. Or they're also not worried particularly about saving you from your insanity by some kind of a palliative or something. They, they, they encourage you to see the, see the craziness, see the insanity, see the intense 
self-centeredness that is running the world everywhere and driving everybody crazy and killing people, torturing people. It's everywhere. It's rampant. This is a place where you can actually come to an understanding, a deep understanding of, of who you are and what this world is about before you, this body mind that is, that is the, uh, is the, the area that senses and receives before you go back into the elements, before the, the sixth sense fields and their objects all close down again. Because who you are doesn't go anywhere. But if you believe this, then you take that with you into the intermediate state. Am I con condemning you to something? No. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe what I'm saying is not going to happen at all. More? What does, <clears throat> if we get angry with the teacher, what does that show us more clearly than us getting angry at someone else? Well, what's the difference between someone else and the teacher? To you, what's, what's the difference between, am I your teacher? What's the difference between me and any other person? You see any difference? Fundamentally, there isn't any difference, but <clears throat> we think there is. So therefore, we have a teacher. More. I don't know how to go into that further. You know, it's something to, it's, it's a valid inquiry. Look closely at that. <clears throat> what about how's our projection um, on the teacher in that case, as the teacher, as different? More so, about helpful. So the teacher won't necessarily fuel that uh, to cause you to go in more circles. You'll have to stop right at the door, and that makes it a Dharma gate. But in somebody else, someone else, uh, you, you can trigger someone else, and they'll come back at you in such a way that causes circularity or warfare or peace fair or apologies or all kinds of other shenanigans going on that causes us to do more loop de loops with our with our partner, with our mate, with our job, with our employer, um, with our clients, possibly, I mean, depending on the energy that shows up there. But with the teacher, it stops. You follow that a little bit? Doesn't go, have you ever told me that you're angry with me? It's funny, I don't recall that. <laughs> Other questions, sir? For yes. her? Uh, for you? You should tell them. <laughs> I still don't think I understand what it means for the teacher to be a mirror for us. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So there's not a deliberate like I'm going to mirror Nishikai, although a little bit of that. So your Dharma name is is kind of a mirror. I'm looking at you, I see the way you function, and I call you two arrows meeting. So, but they haven't met yet for you. But because you're, you go from arrow to arrow to arrow to arrow. But at some point you see that they're, they're not separate. That's why your name is Nishikai. So it's sort of a mirror. I'm showing you what I see, what your true nature is in the form of the confusion that you're dealing with, that it's not separate. There's nothing, there's no winner. There, there is not a, a right or wrong to anything. That's what those two arrows are about. That's kind of a deliberate mirror. Your Dharma name, like hers is uh, Ondo, or Path of Grace, or Paushan, Running Mountain, or uh, Hidden Treasure, or what was I calling you? You know, I've called you a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Freedom Mountain. Already free, already stable, already free. More? So just with that metaphor is the mirror reflecting our own confusion? Are you reflecting our own confusion back at us so that we can see yes, it? The name is more of a deliberate situation, but uh, the 
the mirror quality just starts to, as you go on the path and relate to the teaching person and relate to the, the, the teaching, the Dharma and the community it starts to show up everywhere. Eventually it shows up in the walls, it shows up in the sky, it shows up on the floor. Everything becomes a mirror, but you may have to first see the mirror in the teacher. As Trung Rinpoche would say, the, te- the function of the teacher is to not only insult you, but also introduce you to, to your world, to your world, introduce you to it. There's something to that. How can meeting something where it's at show up as any of the four karmas? Um, <clears throat> someone is functioning in a particular way and they're a student of mine. Uh, I may see myself pacifying them, smoothing them out, or uh, going uh, magnetizing, enriching the situation. Uh, today, I think you got a little bit of the destruction, didn't you, from the teacher? Does that happen very often? Quite a bit. You know, you've got a, I nailed you pretty good today, didn't I? It still hurt? Yeah. So not particularly here to soothe people, but also not trying to make things more difficult. Therefore, it seems to be necessary for the student to really have a commitment to a teacher that they can at least give the benefit of the doubt to. And if you're fully ordained as a monk, you probably should trust the teacher. It needs to go that far, which means that whatever they do, it's a teaching, it's a teaching, it's a teaching. And sometimes that's actively pointing something out to you, like happened with us today. Pretty difficult. So, but you received it, as I recall. And how you work with that is, and we can't really go into that because it's personal. <clears throat> More? Do you have I just have a hard time seeing how meeting something where it's at doesn't have like a procedural quality or prescriptive quality. How is how can it show up so many different ways? Because you're not separate. Because the teaching person, he, she, they, are not someone else. There's no separate being sitting. There's an old man here, with slowly decaying, going back into the elements. But what this is is not a, particularly a human being. It's consciousness only. And if you realize it, you transcend this world without even leaving it. You transcend this body-mind. You're not even a particular human being. You can even take it further and say, you're just consciousness. And consciousness always finds its own form. It may be human, it may be a raccoon. There's no guarantee that when this life goes away that you won't... There's no differentiation between uh, any kind of manifestation between an armadillo or a human being. It's just a life form. More? So if the teacher is meaning something where it's at, but that where it's at is fundamentally not separate, what what is the teacher meaning? The teacher is meeting the confusion in the individual about shrinking down into somebody, into a being, a separate being from everything else that thinks they're being put upon, that thinks they're right or thinks they're wrong, or thinks they're never going to get ahead, or they're a terrible person, or they're really a great person that's getting somewhere, finally, finally getting somewhere. That kind of passion, aggression, ignorance, hope, and fear, that ball of confusion called samsara, that causes us to rotate in and out of lifetimes. That's actually what is intercepted through the, the teacher, if one is, as you are, a monk. That's what you're here to see. You're here to, your idea of what enlightenment was, five years ago, and what it is now is probably quite a bit different, wouldn't you say? It's not another state of mind, it is mind, and there's no, there's no personhood there. Sometimes it's referred to as no mind, because there's nobody there. But yet, these words keep coming out, and these words come out because of what you're producing. Not what I'm thinking of, I don't think in the conventional sense, anyway. It seems like sometimes softness from the teacher can be reflective and sometimes directness can be reflective. How, how is that both the case? <clears throat> Situational depends on what 
the student is dealing with at any particular time. But the teacher is not just coming up with stuff. The teacher is meeting you where they're at, probably with a lot more sense of humor than it looks like. As I said, uh, do you mind me share, sharing a little bit? As I said to you, it's not about you, <laughs> not something new. But it's your vow is to be with all things. Your vow is to save all beings. It's always about the other person. It's not, a, it's, it's not about how you feel. You might feel great. You might feel terrible. You might feel crappy. But it's not about that. It's about extend yourself, save all beings, put others before yourself. You don't have to get rid of or stuff your feelings. But don't use the, the, the feelings to validate some kind of negative energy going out towards somebody else in the form of shutting them out. Does that not line up pretty close with what I was saying today? Shut anybody out. The negativity coming from uh, others is an illusion. The negativity coming up in your own mind stream is an, an illusion. It doesn't mean it doesn't seem real, but it's unreal. If you realize it, I'm not saying that your work is over, but the warfare is over with. You're no longer fighting with anything, nor are you agreeing with anything. More good questions. Questions for her now. <laughs> Any questions for her? Go ahead. When you mind, earlier, Ondo, you said that you see this path is very difficult. What is it about this path that's difficult for you? Um, Wonder why what's not difficult? Um, looking at uh, my self-centeredness is difficult. Um, my uh, constant companion is um, you're such a shithead, playing over and over and in my head. So he invites me to look at that and and really look at it. It's not easy because I see the um, threads of self-centeredness of uh, um, how that shame keeps me from uh, feeling feelings, but taking responsibility. So it's just one example of how I find the path difficult right now? Are you bowing? So do you have certain expectations about this path as to if it's not difficult, what will it be? Bowing? Um, by that question and my answer, I guess I must have expectations. Thank you for pointing that out. How's Sean going? Yeah. To Ondo, what would a path that isn't difficult look like to you, Bowing? I don't know. No personal experience of that. So. Again, I appreciate that question because it's very much um, how I've dealt with life. Life has been very difficult and it's never not been difficult. Kevin, a, a question for Ando. I've heard uh, <clears throat> Sokazan talk about or say that students of the teacher should offer difficulty to the teacher have you been able to do that and how how does that look to you offering anger or difficult emotion to the teacher bowing Wonder bowing i think uh, for me it's situational um so there can be times when i express that and am uh, very forthright uh there can be times when i come to the zendo and prostrate to the tan or to um i pull out the teacher's picture and um, sit with that for half an hour. Uh, all ways to um, uh, 
don't know, expose myself to the truth that Sokazan is pointing at. Going. Kevin Bowing, and to Sokazan, is there some other way that we can make an offering of our difficulty to the teacher, Bowing? I think it's uh, very much dependent on the individual and also on the connection that you have to the teacher, whether it's, in this case, this teacher, whatever your connection is. Um, Anybody I talk to that I've talked to once or twice, I already have a feeling for what they're working with. I, I'm not a mind reader. I don't need to be. I don't read thoughts. I, I, everyone that I see is expressing their difficulty to me all the time. Not because I'm so wonderful or some kind of a seer. It's just that I've been looking at this for a long time. So therefore, I would say, as far as you are, uh, your particular dynamic, I would say, you don't need to do anything more than what you're doing. I, I wouldn't come in and say, you know, do something, do this or do that. Uh, unless you express specific questions to me, I'm probably not going to suggest things. And so I'm a little bit different than the traditional Tibetan teacher or Zen teacher who are kind of operating somewhat out of a playbook or out of standards about how Zen is taught or how Tibetan Buddhism is taught. So having studied both um, and had teachers from both different directions, um, I, I, I look at each situation specifically and situationally. I don't know how else to say it. I'm kind of repeating myself because I don't know what other word other than the situation as it is, which is that person's way of being crazy or disturbed or confused. And I just do the best I can to meet them in their language, in their world. As I met you, what, I don't know how many years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. I met you and uh, Wulong at the same time. Some people are ready for this kind of a connection, and some people there's that chemistry or that connection is there, and with other people it is not. So if you have a more specific question, I'll I'll address that or try to. If someone's fully ordained as a monk, I feel like I try to stop them from doing that by saying, Don't do anything unless you have to. And so but if somebody goes ahead and, and becomes fully ordained as a monk, then I tend to feel that gives me permission to step more into their particular mandala or their particular dynamic, uh, their awakening and their confusion, which are not separate. Uh, it gives me more permission to step into that. And then, then I know when that happens, what I need to do or not do. <clears throat> like the feedback that I gave to uh, Jiuzan today on the phone was, uh, I, I may uh, talk to other people that I don't have as a very strong connection with him. So there are other people that I don't have a strong connection with that I may see that kind of a dynamic happening, but they're not ready to hear this, especially from me. He is ready to hear it. So different with each person, rather than some kind of general, everybody gets the same, uh, has the same koan or something. Kevin Bowing, is there something about even considering one's negativity as something to offer that is transformative bowing i i think that's that is very very possible but the individual would need to see that themselves and begin to tie into that they might get some feedback from me about that if they if they bring it up it's just like uh, I, I do things with people. I don't do them and then get people to follow it. This whole monastery is because of the, my relationship to people, not because something I set up and a bunch of people joined. It, it's the same way with we're working on the 30 verses uh, right now in uh, Sanskrit. That's not something I thought up. You know, we, we do it with people. Somebody comes, uh, 
knows that language and is interested in those verses, which I'm extremely interested in them. And it just kind of comes together. Well, why don't we just say this, uh, let's chant this in Sanskrit. Let's do this together. Find a way to support us. And we're in, we're, in a, we're in a country that 100 years ago, there was no Buddhism here. And even now, it takes, it's very slow taking root. So this is a, this is a, Buddhism is being rooted, as far as I'm concerned, in this monastery right now. I don't know what it'll be here 100 years from now. Maybe the whole world will be gone. I'm not concerned about that because it is about what? Intention, not about accomplishing things. May accomplish, but that's just happens to show up. But to the, the one who sees what this is, uh, we're not looking uh, at goals. We're looking at the intention. What is going to fundamentally help people? Not make things worse for them, but what's going to fundamentally help them? And my way of saying this is around, this has been, been around 2,500 years, if not more, is train your mind, sit down, hold still, and watch the insanity in your own mind without stopping it, fluffing it up, or shutting down on it. Just watch it. And it, it cannot last. It cannot stand up under the heat of, uh, of awareness or prajna or jnana. Wisdom it can't, it can't hold up under that because it's crazy. And also because it is not separate from it. Yes. Don't you bowing? A question from Jay Torian is I don't know the opposite polarity of grasping. Not necessarily. Uh, I wouldn't set it up as a standard. I, I think I feel that I understand what you're at, talking about, but not necessarily. The statement I don't know is is quite a bit different than someone feeling like they don't know. And the actual understanding of what knowing and not knowing is would play a part in that. Uh, knowing is uh, knowing something uh, is actually a prison because we tend to fasten on to it. We tend to use it as a support for the ego, for the self-centeredness. We know things. People get trapped by their knowledge. A question from Francisco Luna. Go ahead. Teacher, while one is sitting in impermanence, one is happy though I believe that some of it is dependent upon one's dignity. How does one know if, while happy, one is being worthy or prideful? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Don't, don't look for reference points, especially worthy or prideful or something like that. Don't look for them. Just practice. Just train your mind to see whatever's arising and going away, including those. Any kind of uh, description of something uh, actually actually stops you from seeing what it is. As soon as we name something, we seal ourselves off from what it is we just named. <clears throat> and so, is, is that about not naming? No. Is that about not not reflecting on pride or uh, or dignity or anything? No. It's about not being a prisoner of your knowledge. This question is for you. Do you need more coffee or water? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need more coffee or water? It's pretty good. Half and half. Half and half. <laughs> yeah. Second thought, cream. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole. Nicole Bowen. Earlier you had said that you're not worried about losing us. Or I did. you're not worried about us going away. I said that. In to respond <laughs> in a response to Junshu, maybe. Did I say that to you? 
I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not getting a thumbs up from you. So you want to continue with your question or not? <laughs> she gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? What do you want to know? Um, if we're worried about losing you, are we able to still show up authentically in front of you? Yeah. yeah. What this represents is not really even a person. Uh, what we what we have here is a is the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, and it's of course it's going to be good if I can hang around for a while, but it's not necessary for this. This is d deliberately set up in such a way that it's not a cult, nothing here to believe, and it's not based on just on on this old man. It's based on what if I'm not here? What how it happens? You watch a video if you want to. But I'll always be in the other room. Everyone is in the other room, by the way. And this is why we have we have six of so six. We have a dozen book studies where we're studying some 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 of it. We're studying talks I've given, but not much. Most, mostly, it's traditional teachings down through the centuries to show that this is this understanding has been going on for millennia, more more than that. So you have the teacher. Uh, as the Buddha, you have the teaching as the Buddha's Dharma or truth, and you have the community, which we have a community. We get together and it's not huge. We don't want it too big. What have we got? How many people are on Zoom? 30 or something? 31. 31. So How many on YouTube? There's some on YouTube probably. 13. Too. Huh? 13. So that's... <laughs> We almost got a hundred people. Well, it's short of a hundred, but I don't do numbers, so. Do you do numbers? Sometimes. How many was that? 44. Right? Tisha was already there, like. <laughs> Who was there? You were 44? 45, she said. So. <laughs> Doggone chemical engineers. <laughs> Augie, <laughs> did you have it too? No. <laughs> Tisha did. Yeah, he's just a. Three numbers ahead of all of us. Um, where are we at? Anything else from in that direction? It's not going to be a problem. It might seem like it, but it's not going to be a problem. What this is can't go anywhere. This body can die, but what this is can't go anywhere. You'll find out. Or not. Maybe you won't. <clears throat> look at the attachment. You don't have to get rid of attachment. Just look at the attachment, and then it'll it'll hand it, handle itself. Kelly Darling, this question is for Unknown. Um, I've said to you and to sent you before that you know, in in the therapy practice, that I need you to I need you to have time to to sit, and I need you to have time to spend with our teacher because it benefits me <laughs> um, for you to spend time with our teacher. And um, my question is, are you aware that as a therapist and as a monk that you do influence the vow to save all beings? I know that intention is there, um, and I uh, see evidence of it. I don't know if it's my interpretation, mm -hmm. but it is. I I believe I see evidence. Finally, I choose a bag. How do I relate to the contrast I see between relating to the teacher and relating to others? Just see the contrast. Just all you have to do is see the contrast. You don't have to jump to one or the other, or value one or devalue the other. It's kind of a built in situation there that's going to be there in any case. But just continue to observe. It's always about awareness. It's never about um, some kind of otherness that will suddenly show up where you've got it. You will not get it. Awakening is not about getting anything. It may be more about losing something. And what would that be? Losing your, your cover-ups, the things that protect our poor little sensitive ego. 
that might might look bad to others or might might embarrass ourselves or we might get things wrong or we might whatever more is it confusion to endeavor to relate to others as if in the same way we relate to the teacher some of that needs to happen but there again it's situational so same way you receive from the teacher you listen to the teacher you receive uh it's not that you uh, you check in your intelligence at the door but you give the teacher the benefit of the doubt even though it seems something might seem off or or not workable you would give it some time you would look at it for a while so you could also do that with others when someone is functioning in a way that is uh, distressing to you or upsetting to you if you give it some time and look at it you might see that where that's coming from is their suffering rather than we don't like how they're treating us therefore we're going to fight with them or we're going to object to them or we're going to criticize them or scold them or do something like that because because by doing that then we kind of go to war with that rather than we receive the warfare coming from them long enough persistent enough uh, without objection without agreeing without validating it i'm just doing this because this is what my teacher said uh, but just just let it let it come forth and don't shut it down don't agree with it don't validate it no rubber stamp approval of anything and uh and no disagreement or shutting out then you begin to see the dependent origination in the personhood of an individual who may be completely stuck in their self-centeredness. But the reason they're in that self-centeredness, as you can see, uh, 22 inches behind them, there's intense fear of just being alive, in which they've managed to cover up by attacking you or making life difficult for you. It's all over the world, blaming others for how we feel. This is the, the uh, to be a monk, be, you start out with stop uh, believing your feelings. That doesn't mean you get rid of them. You still have the feelings, but you receive that on behalf of others. You receive those emotions so others don't have to deal with it. You could say it that way in a relative way. Be with all things, starting with your own feelings, rather than take those feelings and have a conclusion about it where you need to blame somebody else for causing those feelings, even though they may have triggered them. Follow me. Hard work. Go ahead. How can I relate to others such that I don't fuel their confusion the same way the teacher just receives that? You may have to do some of that and be more aware of, of the mechanics there. So you may have to relax a little bit more in that area and be willing to be kind of foolish in that area so that you can so you can see where that what the energy is there, how that moves. Initially, you may have to do that. But fundamentally, you won't have to do that at all, but you may have to do that for a while. You follow me? Do you think you're going to be able to follow me a lot? Because that's a little is okay, but following me a lot is really good. <laughs> it's, uh, what, what am I saying? I'm saying play with it a little bit. Look at your own mind stream and, uh, you know, a bit. If I thought it would help, I would say, don't take yourself so seriously. But that's hard for you not to do that. You take yourself very seriously. So you might want to look at that and see the humor in that. But there's some humor. There's quite a bit of spaciousness in, the, in that, uh, those, that area that concludes and concludes. More? Thank you for that question. Other questions? Where did you come from? <laughs> Some cloud. Come from a cloud. <laughs> I'm mad. Um, when we're seeing how seriously we're taking a situation, how does what does the humor do um, to that situation? It just lightens it up, takes the tension out of it. That's all. It's just. It's not, not like it necessarily goes away. It's just, just lightens it up. So sometimes a uh, Trungpa Rinpoche would say, lessen your demand. And I think that's uh, is okay. But I would say, just don't demand. Don't demand anything. You don't need anything. What do you need? You don't have to demand anything. You're going to get all kinds of things without demanding anything. 
you get, you're not demanding oxygen. At least most of us aren't. We're already in a, an incredibly uh, wonderful realm called a precious human birth, free and well favored. We're free to be here. Nobody stopped us. You know, the, all of the crazy politics in the country are trying to do that, trying to control everyone. And they are doing that in some parts of the world, as we know. But we're free to come and go here. We're free to come and uh, come uh, to a, a, a Buddhist monastery or tune in on Zoom. We're free to do that. And we're all favored in that our mind isn't all clogged up with beliefs and hatred and warfare and intense prejudice for people who don't look like us or talk like us or excuse me, think like us, where this doesn't mean, uh, doesn't confer any any kind of special uh, dispensation. You still have to, are still going to have to work with your mind, but you're free to do it. You're, you're free and you're well favored in that you're not tied up with, with the primitive beliefs about the nature of reality, conflicting emotions and so on. And if you do have con conflicting emotions about this and that, instead of grasping onto one because of your awareness practice, you're able to actually um, have some generosity there and be uh, make friends with yourself on a deep level. That doesn't mean you're going to get rid of conflicting emotions, but you're no longer at war with your mind stream. You're no longer at peace with it. You get to go to peace with it, then it starts to seal it off. Then it starts to bubble again because you've been you're dealing with it through passion, aggression, and ignorance. Do nothing with it. Don't agree. Don't disagree. Don't look away. Do nothing with it. Any questions? Final question from you. Wonderbai, how can we express our gratitude for the teacher? Um, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens if we know that's not a good thing for the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Small serving. <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, that would be your, you know. It shows up a dana or appreciation. It shows up in all kinds of different ways. So you, you do it uh, the best, very the most uh, profound devotion uh, you can have is to train your mind. This is what the teacher in in, in this case or other teachers that to, to see people actually listening to what you're saying and training their mind to see clearly. I, I uh, don't come in here as much as I used to, but when I see people in here sitting here looking at the wall, it's powerfully moving to me. But I know that that's what it takes. That's what I had to do. Uh, most of my time was spent looking at the floor because I wasn't practicing Shikantaza in the conventional sense of looking at the wall, looking at the floor, but pretty much the same practice. So watch well, something that doesn't move. But seeing, seeing you practice, I, I know you practice a lot. I know you blocked that all morning, didn't you? No, you're not required to do that. So, you're not required to, if you live here, you have to do some of it, but you're not required to, to do that. Unless it's Thursday, then probably should block that. <laughs> Are we good? Palshan's getting ready to hit the switch. <laughs> okay, is there a final question on uh, Zoom? Somebody that has something uh, eating at them that they want to ask either one of us about? Take one more. You're baiting, Yu Hong. Yu Hong, go ahead. <laughs> you have the last, quest last question, Yu Hong. Mondo, what's your aspiration? <laughs> Bowing. Mondo, Bowing, to be with all things. <laughs> Starting with my teacher. <laughs> That's hard enough right there. <laughs> Yuhong Bowing, could you say more? It's, it, it's very inspiring to me. So if you could say more, that would be much appreciated. Bowing. Uh, that is um, 
been kind of a driving theme in my life is uh, wanting to be a benefit to others. So um, I've done that in a, a number of ways and um, probably is why I really resonate with Sokazan's message um, and focus on that, on the vow. Um, so to be with all things is to really uh, be with them without any preconceptions, any um, expectations, any uh, demand. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question, Bowing. You can bow in. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay. We can uh, do whatever we do at the end. penetrate into all places so that we and every sentient being together can realize the Buddha's way. Sangha families, friends, and visitors. Heal everyone who is unhappy, sick, or suffering and fill them with light. 